live. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get slowly adjusted while everything's happening here. This is really fun. We're just gonna wait till we have a few viewers out there. I know I'm live. I know there's people coming. I'm told folks are coming. Let's go over here and see if we can see what's gonna happen. Okay, let's do a quick refresh here. Happy Friday, everybody. Want to make sure I can see you all once we get there. Awesome. Okay, good. Video capturing me, wiping sweat off my face. Excellent. Chat is turned on. All right, so as you show up, let me know you're here. That's awesome. Oh, Emily is here. Hello, Emily. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Fantastic. Perfect. Oh, I've got a bunch of folks now watching. Okay, great. I guess I better start presenting here pretty quickly. Thank you all for being here. I am monitoring kind of what's going on on my iPad, mostly so that you can all ask questions, not answer questions, because I'm supposed to be answering questions. Um, real quick, can you hear me? Um, I'm using a brand new microphone system. Obvious, big microphone, you can see it. Um, but I don't know that I've turned it on. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm hoping you can hear me. It doesn't look like it's turned on. Difficult to hear. Okay, working on that, working on that. This is what we're doing. Be right back. Okay, if you're still there, I think I got my microphone fixed. I hope you're still there. Don't give up on me yet. Okay, it's flashing green, coming around. Can you hear me better now? Is it better? Is the volume better? Oh, good, I hear, I can hear you perfectly. Not very loud, putting on the microphone. Much better, much better. Oh, thank you, everybody. So the microphone has got a broken little thing. So we're gonna, this is the learning. This is all about learning. I promise we'll talk about applique here in a second. Thank you all for being here. I see some friendly faces. Just playing with a little bit of our audio setup here. I thought I had it figured out, but my other microphone just died. Don't know what happened. This will help. Great, okay. Patricia's out there. Julie, thanks for being here with me today. You're welcome to let me know where you're from because I don't know all of you. Know some of you, of course. There we go. Okay, deep breath. My name is Rob Appel. I am the uh, YouTube manager specialist at Stitch in Heaven in Quitman, Texas, but I'm standing in my home studio uh, here in Morro Bay, California, God's country, the most beautiful place in California, of course, uh, right here on the beach. So I'm super excited you're here. Hopefully uh, you recognize me. I did the uh, YouTube channel called Making It Fun with Michael Miller Fabrics the last couple of years. Before that, I was man sewing uh, with uh, the Missouri Star Quilt Company for several years before that. So I've just been very blessed to become a YouTube teaching personality. I'm just a passionate quilt maker. I just love making quilts. I love teaching quilts. I got one of my earlier starts in uh, art career working in my mom's quilt shop. That's here in Morro Bay, or was here in Morro Bay. It's been sold several years ago. And just uh, feeling incredibly blessed to be at this new set of gig, I guess, what you want to call it. Yeah, um, and, and the story's almost not worth telling at the moment. It's not much of a story, really. I know there's a lot of confusion that people have been asking. Um, yeah, I was very, very blessed, very excited to be working with Michael Miller the last couple of years. Uh, but I was also the sales manager there. And I'll just be honest, you know, folks, that was a little bit more than I could handle. It was a lot of data, it was a lot of spreadsheets. I like quilting, I like crafting, I like making stuff with my hands, I like being covered in thread, and I really like doing videos for all of you. So if you don't know, 
I will be putting out a bunch of videos with the other presenters uh, at Stitch in Heaven. I'll be um, working with Abby and Christy and Anita and Deb and a bunch of other uh, remote presenters. So I'm just adding a new style show. We're calling it the YouTube Stitch in Heaven Network. So there'll be a variety of different shows there. So if you liked what I was doing at making it fun, it was good. It was, it was revolving around basic fabrics. That was really important to me. But I didn't have the time to put together full quilt projects. And we're going to talk about Fabulous here in a few seconds. I, I got something special. I want to talk about this. But so anyways, now I get to combine my energy, but the team with Stitch in Heaven, uh, because they do a ton of laser cutting, a bunch of kits, a bunch of uh, full quilt packages. They do adventure travel. I mean, come on, we're going to be doing quilt cruises and land travel and all kinds of awesome stuff. So it's just the perfect business for me to be associated with because of the things I want to create, whether they're applique, laser cut kits for you. Yes, that's going to be awesome. The templates I'm working on, like the Super 60 templates and things, uh, there's just so much variety. So anyway, let me take a moment and let me check some of these questions. Uh, yes, okay, Elizabeth, you're the, the lucky question writer for the moment. This quilt behind me right here is called Fabulous. This version was made with Michael Miller Fabrics. This is the actual version that Charisma Horton, the designer of this quilt, and myself were filming right here in this home studio in California. So Charisma is a dear friend of mine. She actually helped me get the job with Deb out at Stitch in Heaven, which is kind of funny. Uh, but at any rate, uh, she came out about a year ago and we filmed all eight months. So for this particular quilt, there are free tutorials. Now they're at Making It Fun. Um, that's on YouTube. And so each first Wednesday of the month, the tutorials have launched and right now I guess we're uh, six of the eight tutorials are up and, and provided for all of you I know all eight of them are done and ready so it's really cool now stitch in heaven happens to be doing this as a block of the month they do incredible block of the month programs they cut them up they're kitted they're packaged they're perfect they're wonderful for all of that slightly different fabric choices but all still reading the exact same and that's the fun in working with basics is you can swap out different fabrics and get the exact same read on your quilts, right? It's a color wheel. So those of you who are actually looking at the design, I'll try to get out of the way a little bit. It really is a color wheel using mostly half square triangles and some flying geese. It's just a really fun construction. I believe I remember correctly the first month were these big, big blocks that just kind of get you prepared for what you're doing on the quarter square triangles and whatnot. Uh, some fun stars. I love the way that some of these blocks are engineered here, both um, in the black and white. And I don't know that you can see the blue versions way up in the corner, but it's really kind of the chain that brings all of the beautiful quilt together. This quilt here was machine quilted by Charisma Horton herself. I had the blocks all done and then she's like, I'll quilt it for you if you'll actually assemble that darn thing. And so this is the parts and pieces we were working on the set. The one that was behind us when we were doing the videos that quilt is Charisma's quilt, and so that's traveling around with her. She's taking great pictures of it and all that kind of stuff. So this is my quilt. This is fabulous. And the reason I want to talk about it today is I'm pretty sure the block of the months will be sold out by the end of today. Uh, last time I checked, that was earlier this morning, there was only 16 kits still available, or 16 spots still available in the block of the month. Um, so, uh, oh, sorry, you couldn't see the upper corner there, Gene. I just saw your comment come through. Um, so yes, just letting everybody know, uh, you know, Stitch in Heaven really excels in the way that they do their block of the month kits. So they did this one when I came out a few weeks ago and we were out there doing coffee with Anita out on the wonderful back patio behind their retreat center. Um, I had asked if we could get enough extra kits made to um, support all of you that got excited that day. And we did. And so, like I said, we have just a few of those left. So if you're at all interested in doing the fabulous block of the month, get your kit from Stitch in Heaven. Go ahead and go onto their website today. So uh, in the link for the video, I put the description for the YouTube channel. And I really want you all subscribing to YouTube so that I can make sure you don't miss when I go live, even if it's randomly. I, and we will get to a little bit of a lesson, but in the future, one of my jobs is going to be to surprise all of you, to excite all of you, and maybe have some special stuff to entice all of you with. Maybe there'll be giveaways, maybe there'll be prizes, maybe there'll be super special discounts. And we're gonna be doing all of that here on YouTube 
And I say here on YouTube, I mean on YouTube, the platform. I don't mean in this room. We're going to be doing it in all kinds of different fun places. That's part of what I want to do as an adventure quilter. That's my new title, adventure quilter. I like that. Or so well, which we're going to get to also here in a second. So, yes, please make sure you're subscribed over at Stitch in Heaven. The link in the description on today's live feed is to that. What I was talking about a moment ago, and yes, my ADHD is always running strong. Uh, I was talking about the fabulous block of the month. And I forgot to put that link. I am so sorry. I meant to. I got distracted. I was having technical issues with the microphones and all of that stuff. But you can go to stitchinheaven.com. They have a link to the block of the month. And I believe it was actually the May release, but it is called Fabulous by Charisma Horton. And at the end of the video, I'll make sure I go back to the description and put that link up there for all of you as well. Super sorry I missed that step. <laughs> I'm sitting here sweating bullets thinking that I did at the moment. But anyways, yeah, there's going to be probably, like I said, by the end of the day, this program will be closed out. So I want to make sure, especially with the amount of fun charisma I have had this entire year with this beautiful, I should say, this fabulous quilt. I want to make sure you all know, because that was one of the big things is people are trying to get kits, trying to get kits, trying to get kits. Stitch in Heaven has a few left. They're available. They probably will be sold out by the end of the day. So make sure you get them while you can. Let me get that deep breath back in. Let me check a couple more um, of these comments here. Um, oh, what jukey do I have, Sue says. Well, <clears throat> the one sitting next to me is called the uh, Hayar. What is it? Uh, Sayaka means bright. It's the DX3000 um, QVP. This is a multifaceted juki. This does a lot of different things other than embroidery, meaning it doesn't do embroidery. It does all the extra stuff. Across the room, uh, you can't see it at the moment, and I'm not going to show you because it's a disaster. I'm in the middle of a studio remodel right now, so you'll get to see a very small portion of my life today in here. Uh, is the J350 on a seven foot frame. You can go five, seven, 10, or 12. My space allowed for a seven foot frame. Love that machine. Um, and then the other Juki in the room is their Industrial, the J150. And I absolutely love that machine. I never loved binding quilts so much as I did when I got that machine. And um, I will talk for a moment. Uh, again, this is one of the questions that I have seen being asked on some of the social media. Yes, Rob Appel himself, me, uh, am, I, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm a Juki ambassador. Uh, the company came to me a few years ago and asked if I'd like to use their machines. I love the machines. I, like I said, fantastic. Now, Stitch in Heaven happens to be a handy quilter and a Bernina dealer currently, but you know they're adding another 50,000 square feet to their business. If you haven't seen, a couple days ago I posted a shop tour video where I flew my drone, named Roger of course, over the big warehouse expansion, which is incredible. It's just going awesome out there. And so anyways, right now their shop is about 17,000 square feet, and that's the retail plus the offices and what they're doing. So they're blowing this thing out another 66%. Don't quote me on the math, please. And it's going to be amazing. So there's a little shot of that on this big property. They have wonderful retreat centers there on the property. Um, and I'm now getting distracted. Oh, that's right. I was talking about the shop tour video that I just posted, and I wanted you to be able to go ahead and see uh, in the shop and then I also posted a I broke into a quilt shop and made a quilt overnight video which was an exhausting experience but was really fun eh. okay all right let's see who's we're paying attention free motion free motion free motion right I see you Carl I know what you want right there you know I you know I'm not dropping any thread through it alive yeah I, that, that could, that's the worst possible thing that can happen to a quilter is to try to quilt live and I might do it anyways you never know I am threaded and prepared we'll see what happens um, but yes, I was talking about the breaking video I did. I, I let myself into the shop, spent all night making the quilt that is now on the table. And yeah, I played it up that Christy had a quilt that she was in a hurry for, and she was in a huge hurry for it, so we could film with it all week. This is the quilt for the backdrop. This will be the new quilt that hangs here behind me for all of the shows. It's called Synergy. It's from the Splice Magic Book. Um, I can show you a part of it, but I actually have my applique in place, so I can't show you all of it yet right um, but this is uh, it's a wonderful project that really uses a starting cut what do I want to say a starting dimension of squares and you end up with big and little half square triangles and a little bit of trimming it's a really cool technique um, and we are going to put the new So Well logo, So Well is the name of my new show but a reminder that all of it happens at the Stitch and Heaven YouTube network so So Well 
obviously sewing and the wellness for wellness. Um, hopefully you all know, um, maybe I have some new viewers out here. Um, hello Becky out there in Washington as well. Um, I'm a recovering alcoholic. It's been 10 years since my last drink. Yesterday I lost my 10 year chip. It's somewhere in the next room. I heard it hit the floor. It rolled. I cannot find it. I have been carrying the house apart or I would show you what my beautiful coin looks like. But just imagine it right here today. There's pictures of it, but it is lost. I am stressed, but I will find it. Wellness. I don't know much about it. I don't know why I think I should be talking about it, but I know that I struggle with depression and I know that working with my hands and making stuff makes me feel better. And the more people I talk to in the quilting and sewing world, the more I believe, I think this might be why we're all doing this together, is it helps. Sewing is a wonderful escape and also a wonderful inspiration for creativity, right? It's a give, give, win, win kind of situation. So the well is for wellness. We're going to talk a lot about being inspired, working through creativity, what motivates me, how do I get from, ah, that was a great idea, to, ooh, that's a decent looking quilt, kind of thing. And so maybe we should start talking about this now uh, with the, the So Wellness. So I want you all to take your Dramamine because I'm gonna go grab that phone that's on a tripod and I'm gonna show you a little bit better what this applique looks, okay? So it's gonna get sloppy, it's gonna get messy, we're gonna have a little bit of vibration on the phone, but I want you to be able to see what we're doing real quick. So here I come. Hold on, you got your Dramamine, here we go. Oh, there's the roof. Okay, so here's what we're looking at right now, gang. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, can you hear me again? Okay guys, thank you so much for letting me know. I wiggled the wire and the microphone fell out. Can you hear me now? Sound is back. Oh, we're awesome. You guys are the best viewers ever. Uh-oh, I dropped the microphone, it's further away. Okay, slowly trying to put the microphone back on. I think you all know now why I like editing my videos instead of doing live. <laughs> that was nerve wracking. Okay, hopefully you're all back. There you go. Can you hear me? Someone let me know if, I'm, if my audio is back on. It says it's on. Okay, we can hear you. Okay. I gotta set the phone down. I only have two hands. Hang on a sec. You're going in really close to the quilt. You're going in so close to the quilt. You are all very, very close to the quilt. So close to the quilt. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, you can see the stitching. Uh, yes, Carl, I am still playing with the iPhones from the kids down the street. And I appreciate you remember that all of my uh, technology is always somehow recycled. You're awesome, Carl. Okay, so, uh, and this is my personal iPhone, but also recycled. So here we go, back to the applique demo. We're gonna put these letters, we gotta put the circles back in. I gotta stop moving my phone so I stop losing the wires. I just wanted you to see up close and personal what was going on, and we're coming back around here for the demo. Oh, thank you for saying I did a great job of the quilting there. That was really fun. And I was starting to say, because I was talking about being a Juki dealer or Juki ambassador, is I was quilting this quilt on what they call the Bernina, J uh, Bernina Q24, the big long arm. And I really, really wanted to use that machine. I'd only demoed it, gosh, for a few seconds at a, at a quilt show, and it worked beautifully. Um, so, I, yeah, I was just using the best possible tools. So... Let me walk you through a little bit. I want to give you a demo. You know I love to teach, so I want to show you kind of how I did this. Uh, I was starting to say the whole quilt was created and constructed. 
Then the next thing I did, because this is the quilt for the set, so let's talk about this as a real project, what I was really, really looking at. As I hung it on the set, I want to be able to show the logo. Originally, I was going to put the logo right in the center, but then I was afraid I'd be standing in front of the logo all the time. So now I'm going to put the logo up in the upper corner. Visually, I'd rather have the logo in the other corner, but I've got my guitars and my threads and Mike and everybody over here. So for the set balance, I'm still going to park this applique in this far corner. I measured the size I wanted the applique, and I simply sent my logo to a printer. And I'm not going to talk about printing processes because this is actually, I'm using an old printer and old technology for this, and it's not available on a lot of the new stuff. But you can see that I basically printed this thing backwards. That's what I'm trying to say. It was printed backwards because I'm going to trace it on the fusible web. And the reason I want to use fusible web is so I can iron this down. Then I started thinking, okay, well for the lettering, I can cut out each of the individual letters, but then I have to position them and get the kerning and everything just right. So at that moment, that's when I realized, oh, I can do reverse applique inside of the actual applique for getting the lettering just right. And this is a technique I use often because it's easier to cut away when it comes to letters or fine detail. Now, I also did that. I don't know if you can see the cut work here in the star. I was really nervous about that, but I just left about an eighth of an inch, maybe even a sixteenth of the fabric in between, and it really held nicely. I am using a black batik. Batiks have a much denser thread count and they're really great for applique. So that was one of the major things that I wanted to use so that when I cut all this fussiness out, I wouldn't have a bunch of frayed threads hanging. My iron is <laughs> hidden under the table. So let me go ahead and get this thing turned on. I'm gonna get it nice and hot. And the first thing we're gonna really do here is I'm going to align and position the machine. I'm not worried about this section with my name and everything in it because again, it's just two parts, right? It's the name and the lettering and it's a chunk of yellow to let those letters show up. They could have shown up as patchwork, but I think they would have been a little harder to read. Okay, so at any rate, with this situation, we're just gonna get this dialed in and I'm gonna focus primarily on anchoring all of this section of the machine out to the edge here so now we're going to go ahead and peel off the paper. Once everything's been cut out, it's safe to peel off your paper. This is that heat and bond feather light. And with the feather light, it has a very light bond, a very light tacking. I could have used their standard weight because I'm only basically doing one layer. And I'm trying not to make a bunch of noise or damage the little teeny parts of the applique I did. I'm still nervous about going around that big star. Okay, and then in a second, I'm going to wander over to the computer and check for questions. So if you have any questions for me, please type them in real quick. I'm going to go do a, a quick questions check because I don't have anybody here to help me read the questions and stuff. Let's see if I can get through this terrible situation first that I've created. And if you don't have a question, maybe you'd like to let everybody know what you're going to be working on quilt-wise this weekend. So if anyone else feels like bragging, you could brag about what you like to work on. I don't have to be the only one that brags around here. I love bragging, and I think I'm pretty good at it. But Here we go. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Okay, so we have that. We'll just set that aside. And I'm also going to take real quick and peel the yellow off of this, or the paper off of my yellow blob but kind of leaving it where I want it to be so that I can quickly position that machine back in. All right. I'm gonna fold this back over like this, use this hand to hold this right about where it was. Use that hand to put that securely on the floor. I did double check to make sure that my yellow was dense enough that I wasn't gonna get the shade of the patchwork bleeding through my applique. And the heat and bond is not tacky like steam -a -seam. So it's not sticking to itself right now permanently. It's just kind of grabbing a hold a little bit. 
It's a little warm in the studio today, and sometimes that heat will affect what's going on. Okay, so now I've almost got that laid back into place. I think this is a perfect time to do a questions check, so let's come on around here, see what you all have to say. Okay, it's saying the sound is low. Carl's working this weekend. All right, Sue says, here's fun. Sue says she can't hear me now, so she's going to try the replay later. Sue, I'm sorry, but the replay is going to be just as bad. <laughs> this is why live videos are tough for all of us. Okay, hey, um, let me just double check if that light's still on. Make sure everything's going okay. No, the light went off. Now the light's back on. What is going on with this microphone? Okay, it says it's on now. Is that any better? <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Hey, Carl, I know you're there. Did my microphone just change? Did it just get better again? I can't monitor my audio. I didn't realize it had turned off. I came over to check questions and folks were bailing out on me, so. No audio, huh? Hmm. I don't like that. Sound the same. I hear you just fine. Okay. Well, the microphone says it's on, gang. So I'm going to keep going with it. I'm a little nervous. And I know this video is kind of going long. So I won't be here much longer anyways. But I really want to make sure you can enjoy what we're doing. And I will actually be making this into a polished video i've been filming sections in the professional world we call that b-roll and um i've been filming all of the little prep work i was doing up till this part today for fear that this might start to happen things would start to go south a little bit now one of the tools i love to use is either tweezers or a stiletto and um, a stiletto is like a little pokey tool that's going to allow me to move things around. So the first thing I want now is my machine to actually look squared and structured to the quilt itself. Once I have that, then I'm going to kind of just lift up a little and I'm going to use my stiletto to position the yellow right where I need it underneath the black. We're going to peel off this section now. Because this is the heat and bond feather light, I am not going to iron it more than one time. So I actually even need to get the little sections of the ease back into place. I need to make sure everything's 100% ready to go because you don't want to be over ironing anytime you're using fusible webs, even if it's not just the heat and bond feather light. Now I'm positioning my yellow underneath the hand wheel there so everybody will think all of that lettering was done just that way and then let me show you how i created a couple of these shapes i have one little piece i can do this with and um of course i've been using some nice little scissors i got these at stitch in heaven as well the shark rotary cutter this is a tool i invented it's a 14 millimeter blade i don't know if you can see i'm hoping you can right now um, it looks like you should be able to. If I go ahead and just hold this like a pen, it's for freestyle cutting, right? I can do whatever I want, willy-nilly, you know, nice and easy, cutting long, okay? Cutting smooth, cutting... It's just to make it so that your appliques are as beautifully cut as your patchwork pieces. That's what this is for. One of the things I love it is when I'm getting into doing things like this letter. Like that's one of the P's from my name and I need the center of it actually. So to do that, I actually can use this now to come in here and I'm gonna cut just the straight line here. Now, I have enough practice with the tool. I can cut some of this round area 
but I really want this to all be super clean, right? So now I'm just gonna pop my scissors into that cut I just made, and I'm gonna cut with my scissors right around that section. And then over here on the machine, you can see I'm still laying all of the letters with their specific insides of the holes back on in case any of them are different. So this one is labeled the E from the so word. So I'm gonna take off the fusible web real quick and I'm gonna drop this in where it goes. And then my other one was from the word well. So again, peeling off the paper, positioning, And now I'm gonna come on back over, grab my little stiletto or my tweezers or whatever I'm working with, and just kind of rotate until it looks just right. These little E's had a little bit of character to them. Okay, so just like this, Everything for the machine is totally where I want it. Everything is just dialed in. So now let's grab the iron, okay? And I'm literally gonna press one, two, three, and I'm gonna lift. Now I'm making sure I put a little bit of firm pressure down as well. I am not gliding the iron. I'm making sure everything lands right where I want it. As I go through and I secure, and you notice I'm starting with these letters, right? Because it's the letters. We didn't want any of the shifting within the yellow. Now, Carl noticed I had the machine with a free motion foot on it. The old fans at Man Sewing have already been requesting lots more free motion videos. Don't see any problem in that now because we're talking about all things quilting, not just the fabric that's being used. That was kind of my job at the last gig, right? Was talking about the fabrics being used in the projects. Now I'm talking about the techniques being used. And this is a straight line down here. So I'm going to, and it's bendable. I'm actually using the seam. I'm using the patchwork itself to flow through and set that just where I want it. Again, not sliding the iron. And at this point, not even if it wasn't a cordless iron, which this is pretty rad, right? If it was a corded iron, the iron has now gotten cooler than we want it for use. So it goes back on the base. Charges back up. I'm going to look down and see if my green light's still on. The green light's not on anymore. Dang it. Uh, can you still hear me? This will help me learn if I need to worry about the green light or not. My audio is excellent. Okay, Brenda, that was just a second ago. Carl loves the shark. So that iron is a Panasonic 360. It's the cordless iron. I have gone through two of them in about seven years of daily 10 hours on sewing. So I think it's a pretty great product. The thing I love about it, it's got a removable steam reservoir, so it's very easy to fill and you can technically take it off. I am not using steam while I'm using the heat and bond. It's not a steam-based product. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. I hear that you said you can hear me as well. Um, okay, I'm not gonna worry about the green light. I'm just gonna keep on the demo. I appreciate all of you sticking with me. I see that you're still here. This is awesome. So I won't bail if you don't bail. I still need to iron this section over here. Okay. Now, when I laid out my entire design, it was actually bigger than my fusible web was. So the little star or spool of thread that goes at the top of my machine here, I had to make as a secondary piece. I put a couple little notches, you probably can't see, I'm hoping you can't see them, right here, but that's gonna be my alignment mark. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and drop in the rest of the top of the logo. And that was only because I didn't have uh, enough fusible web to draw it all in, in one location. Okay, won't matter if that's gonna go top or bottom. I'd like to sneak it underneath so that when I come over with the free motion machine quilting, I can stitch right over that edge. Now that that is in its location, I can't even see the notches that were created. So now again, I'm just gonna go ahead and press 
and lift. Those of you who are Legally Blonde fans, you're probably thinking right now of the bend and snap, one of my favorite analogies for our fusible pressing, because it always makes the room laugh, especially when I demonstrate my own version of the bend and snap. If you are not aware of the bend and snap, you have a homework assignment in front of you, folks. <laughs> so next step will be to align this up just like it is, making sure that yellow gets in there. I want to focus on making sure that my letters go back into the appropriate position, so I'm not going to try to keep teaching any longer. I mentioned earlier when Carl was requesting the free motion quilting, I'm prepared physically, but not emotionally. So you have to forgive me. It's the logo going on the quilt on the back. I really want to be able to be quiet and calm and focused. I will film it in a few weeks. You'll get to see uh, maybe a more technical video on how I did all of these parts and pieces. I just thought you would really dig being able to come in and see what I've been working on in the studio a little bit. I wanted to make sure that all of you knew that this was probably one of your very last chances to get your kit from Stitch in Heaven for the fabulous quilt. I really want to make sure that all of you can do it if you wanted to. A reminder that those videos are still at Making It Fun and that channel is still up. It's still running. I'm just not making any new videos there. Not sure who will be. Like I said, I'm blessed to be at Stitch in Heaven now, and I'm really excited to get to offer a huge variety of videos, uh, a lot of which you've all been requesting for a long time. So I, maybe I should kind of start to sign off by thanking all of you for the years of support and the years of, I'm going to say, being fans. I, that's not too bold of me. Uh, you know, to, to, to have you take the time to email me and write me and... and Respond in these comments what you want to sew, what you want to know about sewing and quilting and, and wellness, and how does this crazy man actually feel balanced at the end of the day. These are things I would love to talk with all of you about, love to share with all of you about. So, like I said, please make sure you're subscribed now to the Stitch in Heaven YouTube channel. I will be doing more lives now that I'm starting to dial in the audio. That was part of the test today. I just didn't tell you that's what we were doing. And getting everything set up. Set's almost rebuilt, so we've got some great new videos coming at you. If you haven't seen the break-in video, you got to watch it. I think it's hilarious. Of course, I made it myself. And then if, uh, really enjoy that Stitch in Heaven um, shop tour. You get to meet a bunch of the staff over there. Wonderful, wonderful group of people working really, really hard, really creatively. And like I said, I feel so empowered and so blessed to be with this, folks. Uh, doing all kinds of great stuff. So I'm gonna take a moment check some more comments real quick I kind of hate to leave you all but I really don't want to do this. Oh, I can at least tell you what I would do Even though I'm not gonna do it do it um, so The machine is set up for free motion Black thread in the bobbin because I'm gonna mail, nail this thing to the wall I don't care what it looks like on the back and black thread in the top I'm actually going to use polyester thread because we're not creating an heirloom quilt here. And by going through these layers, I want to make sure I'm not shredding my thread when I get on the layers around the letters where I've got lots of layering of fabric. Plus, remember, this is a finished quilt already. I did that intentionally because I wanted the quilting to not be dis. Now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do this comment check and uh, make sure everybody's doing great. Oh, I'm so glad you all love the quilt. And Emily, thank you for saying that uh, I was the reason that you got started quilting. That really means the world to me. Um, I really think this quilting is an incredible place. I'm glad you're here with us, Emily. Um, Oh, great. Uh, Gene was confused while I was at Stitch in Heaven. Yeah, just uh, a new opportunity. And I'm one of those folks that loves uh, challenges and opportunities. So I jumped on it. Um, all right. All right. Everybody, thank you very much for being here. Um, really, really, really excited uh, to present. Oh, I know. I forgot to tell you. I've been mentioning it. Stay tuned. July, I'm heading to Peru. Going on a mission trip, my son, who is 19, and myself, I won't tell you how old I am, we are going to be riding bicycles 310 miles 
over the Andes Mountains into the jungle of Peru where I was at last summer on my personal YouTube channel, Rob Appel, you can, or on my website, robappel.com, you can actually see the recap video I did. I went down with a church group, so I decided to keep it personal. You know, I like to keep my business and my faith somewhat separate, although I'm not at all embarrassed to let you all know I am a believer, of course. Uh, so at any rate, you can check out the video. This is kind of cool, and you, you guys got to see this. I, Stitch in Heaven's donating t-shirts so that I can hand out shirts as along the way, but then also they reached out to some of the Notion suppliers, like the big checkers Notions. They, look at this box. I haven't even completely dug in it yet, but this is amazing. Look at this. This box here is like full of boxes of threads, boxes of needles. Uh, look at you, what a village can do. These are pre-wound bobbins, but we can stitch and stitch and stitch with this stuff. This is incredible. There's going to be knitting supplies in here because there's a bunch of, uh, you know, the alpaca yarns are really popular down there. So anyways, yeah, most of July, I'm going to be gone. Won't be doing videos. I'll have a couple preloaded for you, and that's what the rest of the team's going to be doing. But yes, I will be in Peru. I'm going to try to do live feed videos while riding bicycles over the Andes Mountains. So make sure you're subscribed. I really want to share this adventure with you. It's going to be incredible. Then once we get into the actual mission station, which is in the Amazon uh, River Basin, Magdalene River, we're going to start doing some water sampling. It's something that really was put on my heart while I was there last year. The folks have been boiling their water for drinking for, gosh, the last couple decades. I was there 35 years ago, and at that point, the natives were only boiling the water for the missionaries that came down to help build churches and medical clinics. They learned that by boiling the water, it helped them with life expectancy or longevity, I should say, and, and general health. But they're still boiling their water. So I really feel like there's a better way. We have so much technology. There's a lot of rain. There's a lot of hilly country down there. So again, we'll be flying the drone, doing a bunch of water sampling. And I would really like to figure out a way to uh, start a gravity-fed water filtration system for all of these natives down in the, in the river basin down there. So anyways, that's what's on my heart. I'll be quilting along the way. So you know what's going on here. That was another reason I really wanted to make this transition, make this change. Uh, it just wasn't fair for me to try to serve as a sales manager and a missionary at the same time. But being a creative and a filmmaker and a missionary at the same time, I think I can pull it off, folks. Anyway, so please make sure you're subscribed. I will be doing live feeds, all kinds of crazy stuff over the next few weeks, next few months as I travel through the jungles of Peru. I love you all. I will see you when I see you. I'm not going to tell you when it's going to go live again. That's why you got to subscribe. Adios, everybody. Thanks again for being here. Have a blast. Wonderful, wonderful weekend to you all. Make sure you let us know what you've been sewing on.